Hey, this is Rick, and uh, this is another tutorial. I wanted to say TypeScript tutorial because most of my uh, most of my tutorials have been about TypeScript game development. But today, I'm just going to briefly cover generating a texture atlas, and I'm going to look at uh, Texture Packer, which is uh, really the the uh, texture atlas generator that uh, most people use and it's a fantastic product it costs about twenty five dollars I think so it's it's not particularly expensive but I'd been doing these um, TypeScript tutorials and I'd been telling people about texture packer and then I thought well you know I really should give people a kind of a a freeware alternative and then brilliant as I am I thought wouldn't it be fun to actually uh, write something like texture packer which turned out to be more work than I, I wanted it to be. Uh, but anyway, uh, I didn't do anything near as extensive as uh, Texture Packer. Um, and if you have $25 uh, and uh, this is more than just a hobby, you know, uh, I would recommend going ahead and, and getting Texture Packer. But if you're a hobbyist and you just want a way to generate a sprite sheet without having to like manually put one together, uh, or a Texture Atlas, without having to manually put one together. Uh, I created this uh, app, web app that I called Spritester. Uh, anyway, it's written in um, it's written in TypeScript like everything else. Uh, I've got the code available on GitHub uh, and I'll show you guys how to get that if you actually want to get into it, you know, and look at, uh, at how I put this thing together. But I'm going to just do a quick rundown of, you know, Texture Packer. I'm not going to go into a great detail in Texture Packer, but just kind of some of the basics and you know, show you some of the features that it has, and the relatively featureless Spritester, which I put together, uh, which is available on Spritester.com, uh, if you uh, if you want to check that out. So anyway, um, let's first open up Texture Packer. Okay, so uh, Texture Packer uh, can make textures in a whole variety of different data formats. So when you're creating a texture atlas, you know, there's there there are a million different like formats that different things can take in. Now, I personally end up using this Unity 3D format always. Uh, you know, it, it works with Unity. I've done some Unity work. Um, you know, I believe you could bring it into Flash too. I'm pretty sure I've done that. Uh, you can, um, you know, it's basically JSON data. So the uh, Texture Atlas object that I wrote and have done a tutorial on uh, you know, it, it uses this Unity 3D format. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, Pixie, because I've done some stuff in Pixie, and I'm almost positive that I used the Unity 3D format in that as well. Uh, so that means Phaser can also use it. So it's it's a pretty standard JSON format thing, you know. And then of course with Texture Packer, you want to like, you know, say, okay, well, where's this data file? And I will throw it on my desktop. And I will call it demo, uh, and it'll generate a demo.txt and a demo.png. Um, you know, you could also optimize your PNG output level, which is kind of nice. I don't have any feature like that in Spritester. It just prints out a PNG file, and you know, you've got to go with the format. You could also specify like what's the maximum size and width. Also, don't have that, or you could fix it. You know, and say I definitely want it to fit in that. Um, you know, I do have trimming, which is an option down here, but I just, I just always, I always trim. Um, there's no rotation in mine. You know, so there's, there's like a lot of different options that are available in Texture Packer. I mean, just a ton of them. And it's, it's pretty simple. You know, you just go and get some image files. So I've got, you know, some image files here. I can drag these guys in. And it generates... Oh, see, I've got it on rotation. I don't want it on rotation. Where is that? Someplace. Oh, here we go. Law rotation. So, you know, that's obviously another option if you want to try and get, you know, like the, the best space you can in Texture Packer. You could allow them to rotate uh, the objects, uh, and that way you could potentially, you know, compress this or, you know, make this an even smaller image. Uh, however, I usually don't. I usually just, you know, pack it straight up and then, uh, uh, you know, have the code just use the non-rotated version. I've actually run into some problems, you know, with uh, rotation in my, uh, in some of my games, and I've just not liked using it. So anyway, this is, this is what I 
basically do 99% of the time when I use texture packer. So I basically just made uh, Spritester do what I do 99% of the time. Uh, whether other people use theirs like that, I don't know. But you can get to it from TypescriptGames.com. Uh, I put this free texture atlas generator link on it. Uh, or you could just go to spritester.com. And, you know, as you'll notice, there really aren't any options. Basically, your options are you could size it to a power of two or not. But, you know, just like we did with Texture Packer, you drag in your atlas, it generates a fairly similar, uh, though not the same, um, sprite packing, you know, with power of two. Uh, if you want to do, like, if you want to not have a power of two, I highly recommend you starting from scratch, because if you just uncheck this, it doesn't do the best job of trimming, you know. Uh, like, unlike Texture Packer, which regenerates the whole thing if you switch between powers of two, I would recommend for Spritester first unchecking power of two, and then dragging all your files in. If I could find them. All right, there we are, my image files drag them, drop them here, and then, you know, you'll notice that it uh, it used a lot less space because it doesn't have this power of two sizing over there. And then you just hit download, and it'll download uh, an atlas.png and an atlas.json. So I don't even give you the option of choosing those names. So you just have to go rename them yourself. But uh, I figure it's free, and it's, it's dirt simple. Uh, here it shows you all the various images you put in. Uh, it's free and it's dirt simple. And if you're not looking for a lot of options uh, and you don't feel like downloading an app, uh, you know, to install, um, you just go to spritester.com and it, it works. Um, you know, it's, it's, I'm sure there's bugs in it and it's not perfect. Like, for instance, it does not work in IE because when you go to download it, for some reason, IE doesn't want to let you download two files at once, so you end up getting the JSON file but not the PNG file, and the JSON file is kind of named weirdly. So uh, I'll have to look into that. I'm not sure I can get it working with IE because you know IE is um, uh, is is not very supportive of a lot of HTML5 feature five features, and I'm kind of highly dependent on those in this. Uh, but anyway, uh, basically what I did here was. I just have an HTML5 canvas, you know, in this thing, and then I take all these images, just create image objects on the canvas in the DOM, and then I use, what was the name of that, Sleeters algorithm? I, I googled around for some algorithms, uh, This it's basically two-dimensional bin packing, uh, so if you want to learn more about it, I might do another tutorial on that, but um, you're doing 2D bin packing, um, and I, I believe Sleater's algorithm was the one I chose because it seemed to do a pretty reasonable job. And um, what it what it does, I'll go with powers of two this time. Uh, if I don't go with powers of two, it sizes it sizes the width to whatever whatever my largest sprite is. So if I end up like just dumping these in here, oh that was powers of two. So it, if I start with power of two. It, it sets the width to, it starts at like 256 width, I think, by default, or something like that. But if I, if I don't, if I have that unchecked, and I drag these guys in, it kind of just lays them out straight, you know, and then just packs a few together towards the bottom. You'll notice there's a couple there. Uh, and and what, um, what Sleater's algorithm does is it first looks to see, you know, what's the maximum width of your um, of your widest object, and if you don't have a power of two set, it's going to basically use that as the uh, the width of the canvas. So let me grab these guys. I don't support PSD, so I have to grab these, and I got so I support like PNG and JSON basically. But so you know, if you don't have powers two selected, it's going to take. The, the whatever the widest one is and set the width to that and then it's going to build down from there and the first thing it's going to do uh, is you know it, it's going to start packing anything just on top of each other that has a width more than a width of half of whatever this is and then it's going to start packing everything in y order after that until it runs out of space that it can pack you know y from highest to lowest and then it breaks it into two separate bins 
and does the Y packing thing again, you know. So uh, it, it was kind of an interesting algorithm. It seems to work out pretty well uh, most of the time, and it was reasonably simple. Um, there, there are a million more algorithms, and if you want, like, your choice amongst a lot of them, let me see. I believe you get, let's see, algorithm. Oh, it just has max, rex, and basic. For some reason, I was thinking that there were a lot of algorithms in Texture Packer, but I guess it just has two. Basic seems to not... Yeah, that just strips them out like that. So they're all... So Basic doesn't seem to do a super job. I think if you have Texture Packer, you can use the Basic algorithm for free, but I'm not sure about that. Um, but anyway, generally speaking, Texture Packer is not free, but it's not that expensive. So if you use, if you're going to, if you're going to be using this a whole lot and you don't mind spending $25, then, you know, Texture Packer is probably a better choice. But anyway, uh, Spritester was also fun and I've got the code out there and I'm going to do some tutorials on how, actually how I wrote this. So if anyone's interested in seeing, you know, how you write a 2D bin packing uh, program, uh, as obscure as that is. Oh, and here's the GitHub, by the way, um, before I forget. You know, it's under Battle Line Games Spritester. Um, and so I've got, you know, the classes all in TypeScript. And uh, I, this app.js is actually the compiled app. You don't need that. Uh, I threw it in there on accident, actually. But, you know, basically take the TypeScript, uh, take the TypeScript files, compile them together with this index.html, and that gives you uh, everything you need if you wanted to check out the code. Um, but anyway, uh, later I'll probably do a tutorial on, on you know, how you actually do the two-dimensional bin packing. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll go from there. <laughs> but anyway, hopefully I didn't bore anyone with this. Uh, I was just kind of excited, uh, you know, because I spent longer than I should have writing this stupid thing that has very few features and is easily eclipsed by a $25 program. So... Anyway, hope you enjoy it. Uh, let me know what you think. Thank you very much for uh, watching.